Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Beauty filters are changing the way that we see ourselves. It seems like everyone is on social media these days. I don't care if it's Snapchat, Instagram, or Twitter. Even our baby boomer parents are all on these apps. While they can be fun to interact with and help us stay connected with friends and family, there's also a dark side to social media that nobody seems to be talking about. Social media platforms such as Instagram and Snapchat are visual-based social media platforms, and they are very popular amongst young people, especially young women. One popular content that people use all the time on Snapchat and Instagram are beauty filters. Now, Beauty Filter is a photo editing tool that allows users to smooth out their skin, enhance their lips and their eyes, contour their noses, and also alter their jawlines and their cheekbones. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with adding a filter here or there. They're very entertaining, and it's a way to add a little bit of a sparkle to your pictures. I've done them myself. I use filters every now and then. But what is the cost of everybody filtering their pictures? Have you ever really thought about it? Did you know that because of these beauty filters that we're being inundated with, a lot of young women are now seeking out plastic surgeons to alter their appearances to look just like their filtered photo. The trend is called Snapchat dysmorphia. Welcome back to Lovely TTV, and today we're going to be discussing beauty filters and how they are actually changing the way we perceive ourselves. But before we take this deep dive into these unrealistic beauty standards, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe down below. Photoshop and edited images and digital touch-ups on photos are nothing new. This has been something that we've been seeing for decades. Even before the internet and social media exploded, back in the 90s, a lot of people struggled with body dysmorphia because of pictures of models and celebrities in popular magazines. They were notoriously edited and many people didn't know about editing. So they assumed that when they saw the picture of Cindy Crawford in a magazine or Tyra Banks or Nikki Taylor, they assumed that this is what these women look like. And these women were flawless, beautiful skin, perfect bodies, white teeth. But then as more news came out because women were comparing themselves to these unrealistic standards, it finally came out to the masses that their pictures were being edited. So you are basically comparing yourself to a false image. And unfortunately, it's only gotten worse with social media and social media filters. So yes, there are definitely silly Snapchat filters like the puppy dog filter that makes you look like a dog. You stick your tongue out and you hear a slurping sound. And you know, those kind of filters are very much harmless, but there are a lot more Snapchat filters and Instagram filters that really alter the way people look at themselves. Now using these filters are definitely a really popular way to change your appearance. They allow you to add various effects such as colorful backgrounds, funny faces, in order to make your snaps more fun and entertaining, but do they actually have any effect on how we see ourselves? Some people believe that Snapchat filters can help us feel better about ourselves by changing our negative impression of ourselves into a positive one. For example, let's say I take a selfie and I use a Snapchat filter that makes my skin look smoother and I post it onto other social media platforms like Instagram or Twitter. The edited image will eventually gain a bunch of affirmation in the form of likes, comments, hearts, thumbs ups, retweets, etc. This all releases dopamine. So as you're getting all of this feedback from people, it's releasing a rush of dopamine and makes you feel like, whoa, I'm really popular. People are liking this. They're thinking I look gorgeous like this. And you end up wanting to do it again. And then at that point, you can't go back to just taking a regular picture because you get more traction and more love and more likes and more hearts and more dopamine from the filtered picture. So that's how people get caught in these cycles of using filters and using Facetune and things like that. Now, other people might argue that Snapchat filters do not actually affect your self-image. They're mainly there for amusement purposes rather than altering your true self-view. 
However, there is some evidence that suggests that filters do have an impact on social attitudes and perceptions. For example, you can have somebody take a picture with no filter on there and then take the same exact picture, same outfit, same hairdo, slap on a filter. The picture with the filter will automatically be seen as favorable on social media. It will be liked more. It will be tweeted more. It will get more hearts. This is why people get stuck on this whole filter hamster wheel. Now, while occasionally using the Instagram story filter to cover up a makeup free face may seem harmless. Frequent usage though can establish a new standard of beauty of how you think your face should appear. A person can see how they would appear with a smaller nose, no bags under their eyes, a more defined jawline by applying a face filter. When we do this repeatedly, we develop a false sense of perception of who we really are. And then when we see our own true reflection in photographs and they do not match the altered picture, it can start to make us feel insecure. So like I said, all of this can trigger insecurities. And additionally, as Botox and less invasive fillers become more affordable, a lot of wealthy younger people, Gen Zers especially, they're also able to pursue their best selves because plastic surgery, fillers, and things like that are getting a lot cheaper than they were 5, 10, even 15 years ago. In 2018, many plastic surgeons around the country started noticing a disturbing trend. They all remembered the days when people would bring in photos of celebrities into plastic surgeons' offices and say things like, hey, I want Angelina Jolie's lips or Brad Pitt's jawline, or I want, you know, Kim Kardashian's nose or Kylie Jenner's lips. Well, that's not the case anymore. Now what people are doing is that they want to look like themselves, but unfortunately not their real selves. They want to look like a heavily edited version of their filtered self. And that is what people are bringing into doctors and plastic surgeons offices. They are seeing a trend of people bringing in their own selfies, usually edited on their smartphone and they're asking to look like their selfie picture. So they have now coined this phenomenon, Snapchat dysmorphia, and it's caused widespread concern amongst experts who are worried about the negative effect on people's self-esteem and potential triggers of body dysmorphic disorder which is also a mental illness that's classified on the obsessive compulsive spectrum. Now this is a really alarming trend because those filtered selfies often represent an unattainable look and they are blurring the lines of reality and fantasy for a lot of these patients. So Snapchat dysmorphia is caused as a result of people not being able to edit away their imperfections with ease. As a matter of fact, users of image heavy social media platforms like Instagram and Snapchat are considered more likely to get plastic surgery. As beauty filters are becoming more popular each day and there's so many to choose from, it's being seen as normal for most people, especially young women, to use these beauty filters to, you know, change their appearance whenever or to hide their imperfections or if they don't feel like putting on a full face of makeup, they can just simply use a filter. And the problem is when you're constantly altering your photos, the result is you, but it's a better version staring back at you. So you may start to get it in your head that that's what you should look like. You're literally staring at a digital mirror version of yourself, and it's a superior version of yourself looking back at you. That's what you're basically telling your brain. So this is another reason why people are becoming more and more addicted to using and interacting with filters. Now, according to research on relationships between social media and self-esteem, 55% of plastic surgeons reported in 2018 that their patients' surgeries were driven by a desire to look better in their selfies. Face filters influence the kind of changes that users want to make in their lives, as well as how they act in their real life. The most frequently requested surgical procedure, according to plastic surgeons, are facelifts, chin augmentations, submental liposuction, and rhinoplasty. These are all facial features that these filters are digitally altering. So as these filters are altering our jawlines, our noses, as those are being digitally altered, plastic surgeons are seeing a request in those on the rise by a lot of regular people. Now, the disconnect between expectation and reality is also what can cause body dysmorphic disorder, but that's a whole nother video. So what are some of the ways that you can get over filter dysmorphia? 
one, you have to be realistic. You're not going to give up social media. Like, nobody's just going to completely get rid of social media, right? We've all been conditioned to come on here at least, you know, a few times a month. But you have to start thinking like this. You have to start thinking about your screen usage rather than automatically grabbing your phone during moments of downtime. You know, ask yourself, why are you opening up this app and what do you need to accomplish by opening up this app? Are you going to just go check on news, sip on some tea, or are you going to go follow your favorite influencer and then, you know, start the whole process of self-loathing yourself because you don't look like them? Another thing you have to do is definitely have some self-introspection, meaning you need to take stock of the major areas in your life that make up who you are. Remind yourself that you're more than just your appearance. You know, you're funny, you're bright, you know what I'm saying, you're a good person, you have a big heart. Remind yourself of positive affirmations. Everything is not about looks. Also, consider curating your feed. A lot of people feel like they have to follow everybody and their mom on social media, and you do not. One of the things, I've talked about this on Discord, and one of the things that's worked for me is watching who I follow. I might follow a handful of celebrities, and then I follow blogs like The Shade Room and things like that. But for the most part, most of my feed consists of regular people. I follow, I tend to follow a lot of my own tea sippers, to be honest with you. They might have left a comment, or I liked them. You know, I thought they were funny, or maybe, you know, some people that I've met, you know, just throughout life. And I follow them, and they're just regular people posting their regular life. They're not posting all this high-end shit. They're not really posing, you know, half naked on my timeline. So my timeline is curated to where I don't feel really bad or, you know, start questioning myself. So the only time I see certain things that might trigger me is usually from the blogs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But again, it's not like consistently on my timeline. So it's all about who you follow. So you need to make sure that your social media feed is not overrun by people that make you feel bad about yourself or second guess yourself or wish over and over again that you should, you know, just get your face done, you know, get your nose done, get your ass done, things like that. You need to make sure that you're also feeding yourself with people who are positive and who exude positivity and who like themselves for who they are. That will also help you in the long run as well. And then last but not least, do not be afraid to give yourself a break and some grace. Some of the things that we say to ourselves, we would never say to another person. So stop constantly criticizing your appearance. Stop constantly going in on yourself. If you wouldn't say it to another person on the street because you think it's mean, then why would you say it to yourself? You're human and nobody is perfect. Also, do not forget to take social media breaks slash social media detox to clear your mind and unplug from the matrix. I do this all the time, even though I'm a social media quote unquote influencer. Y'all know me. I will disappear for days upon days just because sometimes I need a break. Sometimes it's information overload. So don't forget to just, you know, take time out for yourself, nourish your body, give yourself some positive affirmations and understand that nobody's perfect and stop comparing yourself to people who are also heavily edited and face filtered and tune faced to death. Okay. You, it's, you're basically comparing yourself to an artificial intelligence as opposed to a real human being. Nobody has a perfect face. Very rarely do people have just perfect faces with no blemishes, no scars, no nothing, you know, so everybody has something that they feel insecure about. So please understand that you're not alone. Filters are going to be around and we're all still going to use them, right? So the question becomes, how do we regulate or differentiate between our actual beauty and the false standards of beauty that's being placed by some of these social media apps? Is it up to us as users to know better or is it up to the social media platforms to somehow regulate these filters? So I leave the question with you guys. Let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure you guys leave a comment. Don't forget to hit that like button. And most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for taking time out to watch this. Have a great day. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.